Hey, this is Dodger, and you're watching my show. Three, two, one, ready, go. I am recording this episode really late at night because, okay, look, if any of you have ever used Duolingo before and wondered, why the heck hey, they never added Japanese. They have Japanese now, so I was sitting there learning the numbers. They were learning Japanese numbers on the phone. Duolingo is super fun, I think, but I, I never, with any of those language apps, I never get very far. There's a point where sentence structure starts to get really difficult for me, and I'm like, I don't know what any of this, <laughs> I don't know what any of this is anymore. Um, that's the point at which I, I wish that there was just a native speaker next to me to be like, this. <laughs> and I could go, oh, I get it now. Um, but either way, starting from scratch with Duolingo is fun. It's fun. It's like a little game. So for our first piece of news, speaking of apps, there is now a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure app. It's being marketed as a manga app because you can technically read the manga in the app, but it's also, I think, like kind of a gambly game. From what I understand, you can read a chapter every day. And if you want to read more, then you have to like unlock it with in-game gold, which you have to get by playing like a, a sort of weird game inside of the app. And it's technically free, but it lets you like buy plays in the game in order to get the gold in order to read more of the manga. It's, I don't know. Look, I know plenty of people who are super duper into JoJo's, so probably will get this regardless. But I don't know, to me, it seems like an app for people who are just super into JoJo's and just want more JoJo stuff, you know? I don't, I don't understand how it gives you anything new, really? Like, if it was me, right, and I was on my phone and I read a chapter of the manga, and then it was like, you can't read anymore until tomorrow, you silly goose, or you can play our little weird game, I would just hop onto my computer and go to like manga here or something. You didn't hear that kids. I don't, I don't, I don't read on the, on the bootleggy sites. Yeah, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure official manga app. So there you go. Man, is it ever, look, I love JoJo's, but is it ever kind of like shocking in the moment how into JoJo's a lot of people are? I like guess it's, it's fascinating to me. It's fascinating to me how many people I know are super obsessed with JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as a person who enjoys it just fine, but is not obsessed. And then I look on and I see friends who are super duper obsessed. I'm like, man, dang, JoJo's. There's something magical. There's like a, pa there's a hidden power in there, an infectious power that just gets you wanting bright colors and muscles forever in your life. Although to be fair, I would love bright colors and muscles forever in my life as well. So, you know what? Pfft. We're all the same, we're all humans. That's what I've learned today. You might remember a few weeks ago we were talking about Miyazaki and how he's working on a new project, right? He was like, I'm done, I'm retired, I'm not doing it anymore. And then he said that he was gonna be working on a project and then people started going to Ghibli and saying, are you guys doing the project with him? And the people at Ghibli were like, he, like he, we don't even know if he's doing a thing. He apparently, is officially starting production on his thing. This is, it's real. He's starting production in October and he's looking for help. So if you're somebody who would like to go to Japan and work with Miyazaki on a movie, then like, maybe you should check out the link below. That's all I'm saying. Now, some of the people who are looking at the information on this are saying, wow, they're actually not paying people very much, like in comparison to what people that are in the industry would get paid at that level. Um, so there might be a weird like, yeah, but you get to work with Miyazaki, right? Like, yeah, we're not gonna pay you as much as people would normally get paid at this level doing this job, but you get to be doing it with Miyazaki. So, which part of me says, yeah, there's value in that. And then the other part of me thinks that maybe, especially after the way that Ghibli responded to being asked about Miyazaki's project and seeming kind of defensive, like, we don't have to help him with, you know, he wanted to do this on his own, it's not, it's not us. It's me paraphrasing. <laughs> me paraphrasing a very polite response <laughs> to talking about Miyazaki from their standpoint. But um, uh, I'm wondering if Miyazaki kind of like ran into some roadblocks in trying to get this produced, you know? 
So maybe he's sort of in this position where it's like, I really need help. Um, you know, I want to hire people and this is how much I can pay you. And if you see value in working on a project with me for that much, then cool. I hope it's I also think that it's probably different from country to country, right? Like how much you would get paid for an animation job, let's say. I bet depending on what country you're in, that could be drastically different. So who knows? Either way, if you're an animator or a background artist and you want to help Miyazaki with his surely this time final film, then uh, check it out. Do some research. See if there's any possible way you can go out there. Don't let your dreams be beams, kid. I didn't want to say memes. I feel like everybody talks about, everybody's talking about memes nowadays. Tokyo Ghoul is getting a really gross cafe where you eat ghoul food. And that's, that's basically it. Like every picture, look, they have to make a cafe for everything. I get that. Um, a cafe where they're like, how do we make it look as much like you're eating gross people as possible? How do we do that? I'm like, we need to stop. Meals have names like Kaneki's One-Eyed Curry and Sukiyami's Eyeball Cheese Mousse. Don't do this to me. It looks like for the most part, the food is food that you would see in panels from the manga or images from the anime, right? So some of them are totally normal looking. And then the rest of them are like, but what if we just like splattered a lot of red stuff on there? Like you're eating people. <laughs> I'm like, don't. But again, Japan really loves their really focused, specific cafes. They're so into that. And part of me just, I feel like one day when I finally go there, because I've never been, one day when I finally go to Japan, I'm going to wind up in this weird vortex of just like all kinds of different cafes forever. But you know what? I will not go to the Tokyo Ghoul one. Mm -mm. No, no ma'am, because I don't want to eat eyeballs. It's not on my list of to-dos. I did dissect an eyeball once though. That was cool. Look, I'm down to like, look at it. But I don't want to put it in my mouth places. The Tokyo Ghoul Cafe is running from May 27th to June 28th. Okay, so it's like a pop-up cafe. So you only got, look, you only got a hot minute to go eat eyeballs. So g get in there. Speaking of true love, we weren't talking about true love, but we were talking about eyeballs. If you're in love with eyeballs, then this will be right up your alley. Seeing of, um... <laughs> oh no, what a bad joke, wow. So some of you might have seen articles or even just the picture of a penguin that has a little cardboard cutout of an anime girl inside of its pen. And it became like this just really adorable thing where there was this penguin that seemed to be completely obsessed with a weird anime girl cardboard cutout. So everybody was like, oh my gosh, it's the otaku penguin, adorable. So the girl, like the actual cutout, is a character from Kimono Friends, which um, is an anime where everybody's like a different animal. And then there's, I think, I think there's one human and everybody's like, what are you, right? So this was the penguin girl. They put her in the penguin zoo, like, pen as a weird um like merchandising press thing and this one penguin grapekun grapekun became obsessed like would not leave like wouldn't leave this cardboard cutout alone and it was adorable so naturally the girl who does the voice acting for the penguin girl in kimono friends um, came to visit Grapekun and they took all kinds of photos where she was like holding him and it was adorable. Hulululu, that's her name. Oh my gosh, stop it. I guess after this collaboration with the zoo and Kimono Friends and all of this happened, they did like a big, I don't know, I just read this in an article just now. They did like a big um, talk about penguins and their mating habits like because people were like what is this so i think that's also adorable look i'm just gonna keep using the word adorable because it is it's so cute and this poor penguin is in love with a cardboard cutout and that is sad and i also just as a as a last thing on this topic i have to say he didn't look nearly as excited to be hanging out with the voice actress so i think maybe he's only into 2d 
And as a final bit of news, any fans of Fairy Tale might be very sad to find out that there will only be two more volumes of the manga before it comes to a close. Fairy Tale has been going for a while now. It's one of those really long form sort of shonen battle stories, you know. And even though that announcement was made, Hiro Mashima, who is uh, the mangaka for it, went on Twitter and was like, don't worry y'all, I got all kinds of projects planned with the fairy tale characters. So I, I kind of appreciate that, that there wasn't like a lot of time because it feels like, I don't know, with situations like Naruto, right? They kept saying, oh, it's gonna end, it's gonna end, it's gonna end. And then they wound up doing, you know, a, a sort of different series follow-up. So it didn't ever like really end. Um, and we were under the impression it was going to. So it's it's kind of, I don't know, I guess I should be in the center here. I guess I should be in the center because I'm, I'm doing my opinions now. Not that that's always the way that I do things. Not that I stick to that as like a general rule, but I felt weird still standing there, okay? Anyway, um, I don't know. It just, I like that the second that it was announced that the manga was going to be ending, um, that Hiro, and Hiro has always been a very, um, like just, just really interactive with the community and just works really hard, you know? So it was nice to have Hiro immediately say like, yeah, the manga's gonna end, but I have lots of other projects planned and it's not, you know, that's not the last story you're gonna hear about the guild or anything like that. It's gonna, it is going to continue. So didn't really allow for any kind of time for people to be like, oh my God. I've had an on and off romance with fairy tale. There are some times where I'm like, this is, this is good. I like this. And other times where it's just not, it hasn't really snagged me, you know? Um, Sam has always kept up with it. He really likes it. But even for him, there are some arcs where he's like, oh my God, can this just, ugh. So maybe ending the manga and starting some new projects, but still in the same world, maybe with the same characters, um, we'll breathe some new life into it and give, you know, new ideas, new fun stuff. So we'll just have to see. But anywho, that's been my show. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a positive or a negative response, feel free to leave it in my comment section. And if you'd like to watch my streams, you can find them at twitch.tv slash dexbonus. Thank you all so much for watching today. Um, if you are watching this before the weekend, then keep an eye out for me at Momocon if you are there. And um, I'm gonna be doing some panels with TB and Jesse, and I'm gonna be there all weekend. So if you see us, please, please say hi. We'll be doing a signing, all kinds of stuff. And we would love to, you know, see you guys. So, so. anyway, have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.